<sighs> so we've been traveling full time as a family for over a year now, and we have learned a thing or two about packing suitcases. So in this video, we're gonna run you through some of the tips and tricks that we've learned over the last year that will help you as a new traveler, make sure that you A, can take everything you want and possibly more on your next trip, but also make sure you don't lose anything along the way and not have to pay a fortune to get the bags through airports. So I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pauline. And we are from Mitch's on the Horizon. And I like to think we are experienced travelers. And a lot of that experience has come from trial and error. And one of the first places we learned trial and error was with the weights of our suitcases. This is true. So as a family of four, we carry two medium-sized suitcases, so they're a 60 centimeter, and we have two carry-on hand luggage, just standard small rectangular hand luggage. And we are fitting a family of fours worth of stuff into those suitcases. And the thing is, when you are packing for a family for an extended period of time, but the same applies if you're just going for a short business trip or a couple of weeks away, you've got to be conscious of how much weight you're carrying because it is the single biggest expense when you're getting on a flight outside of the actual flight itself. And there is ways of saving a lot of money when you travel with suitcases. And a lot of people don't appreciate that until they actually get to the airport and they're slapped with a massive bill. Yeah. So do you actually know how much your suitcase weighs? That is one of the biggest problems that everyone has. So you need to go and get a suitcase scales. They're a tiny little item they hook onto your bag, you lift them up, and it will tell you how much you weigh. So what you need to do is when you are booking a flight, whatever carrier it is, whether it's a budget carrier, whether it's a bit more expensive, it's business class, whatever it is, you need to know the weight of your bag. For example, with AirAsia, a very cheap, low cost airfare, you need to book your flight baggage when you book your ticket. So. We know that our suitcases are 20 and 25 kilos, so I always pre-purchase our bags as I'm doing the flight because if you don't want to get charged another two times that amount, so let's say your bag costs $20 to get on the flight when you purchase the ticket, it's going to cost you $100 at the gate or more. So you want to know what the baggage weight is and then if your airfare includes it or whether it doesn't, you've got to add it on at that point. And this isn't just anecdotal. They don't just go, oh, it's a couple of kilos over, we'll just let you through. They're pretty serious about that because they know how much the plane weighs and they have to account for that. And mm -hmm. I have heard a story of a family that we have met traveling personally. They got they got slogged with $1,000 because they didn't say they had checked in bags when they bought their tickets. So they were up for 80 kilos of luggage, which cost them $1,000 at the airport, which would have cost them like $80 if they had just checked their bags in. Yep with at the time of booking. So it's super important to make sure <laughs> that you don't ruin your trip by not including the cat check-in baggage that you have by doing a simple thing and weighing it and yeah. knowing beforehand. And also a little tip is if you have purchased a ticket and you've put on there, you've only got 20 kilos of baggage, but then when you get to the date and you've weighed your bag and you're going to board your flight in two days and it weighs over what you've purchased. So let's say you've purchased 20 kilos and your bag weighs 25 kilos. You need to log in straight away through your booking, through how however you did it and just upgrade that extra five kilos. It may cost you another 10 or $15, but it's going to be cheaper than paying an astronomical amount at the gate when they say, uh-uh, you're overweight. Go up and pay for it. And it's also the inconvenience because they pull you out of the line, yeah. they make you go to a different counter, can slow you down. And if it's tight flight, yeah. you could miss your flight because you're five kilos over. And that would be much worse than just going online and, yeah. and booking it. Now, the other thing you want to make sure you do is you need to have a rough idea of what your bag weighs before you leave mm. and what it's going to weigh when you come back. And I know this is pretty hard to do, but what happens is a lot of people weigh their bags and they go, oh, it's only 20 kilos. Then they leave for two, three weeks and they buy a heap of souvenirs or they buy this nice wooden vase that they wanted or yeah. something like that. And they add an extra five kilos to their bag and then they're like, they forget that they did it. 
and they get mm. to the airport and they're up for $50, it slows them down. So you have to have a rough idea of what you're going to purchase when you're away, just ballpark and kind of account for that when you go and book your return flight. Just put it in there so you don't forget it or set a reminder on your phone to go, yep, I've got to check how much my bag weighs because the airlines, the low cost airlines kind of rely on people coming to the airport and having bags that way too much. That's how they make the little nice bit of revenue on the top that makes the profits for them. Also, the other thing is, even if you don't go and purchase anything, you've got to remember if you leave and it's a nice warm climate here and you're going away to a, to a wintry climate and you're holding on to a jacket, but then you pack it in your suitcase to come home, that can add extra weight. So anything that you're carrying that you're going out with that's not coming back on you shoes, jackets, all that kind of stuff that gets packed, that can also add extra weight. So you really got to remember what stuff is going in and what stuff isn't. And that leads us to the next thing we wanted to mention, It, which for new travelers out there, is that you really have to make the most of the space you have in your bags. Mm -hmm. Whether you are traveling like we are for a very extended period of time, basically living out of suitcases, or whether you're just going away for two or three weeks and you want to grab a few souvenirs. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly your bag will fill up if you don't pack with a bit of conscious effort. One way we have found to maximize the space in our suitcase is with packing packing cubes. Now, there's a difference in packing cubes, they're not all the same. A standard packing cube has one zip that goes around the top, it's a material bag, put all your items in there, that's your packing cube. The second packing cube is a compression packing cube and that's where it has a two zip system. On the top, you zip it open, you put your items in there, and then around the middle, it will have another zip that can either zip once or twice to get your compression at least half of what you put in that bag. So a compression packing cube is a lot better to save you space when you can get your clothes from a full size down to a half size because then you can add more stuff on the top. And it also helps to get some different size packing cubes as well. So generally when you buy compression packing cubes, yep. especially they come in a few different sizes and they make it, they're actually very handy to have the different sizes because the kids have got small back packing cubes, you've got medium sized ones, I've got large ones, yeah. but then we can kind of jigsaw puzzle them into place so that we're making the absolute maximum amount of space the beauty about packing cubes too is that they're square and they just slot in a little bit like Tetris. Yeah. Now, Pauline touched on this, but not all packing cubes, even compression ones are created mm -hmm. equal. So you really need to, if you're going to go and buy them, we, we've got the ones that we've got on, that we bought off Amazon. We've got a link to them in the description. You need to make sure to read the reviews of these compression bags because there's nothing worse than buying this compression bag and you go to zip it up and the zip splits. Yeah. Or you go and zip it up and it, and it tears. Yeah. So you really need to read the reviews because there's some cheap ones out there and it's sort of something you don't want to skimp on because it's actually doing quite a big job. There are some that have really, really bad zips, like really terrible quality. So let's say it's a zip on a jacket and it's really flimsy. You're forever like trying to get that zip in there and you just give up. That's what some of these packing cubes can do to you as well. Halfway through your trip or a day in, you'll be zipping it around and the zip just gets stuck or it breaks and you're done. Yeah. Like you're just so frustrated at it. Uh, and also, if you've really packed tightly, mm. you know, if your bag doubles in size, mm. like if you have a compression cube that doubles in size, it could really affect... That could affect everything in that suitcase. Yeah. So that's one strategy we use to get the maximum amount of stuff in our bag, density-wise. You know, we just press everything down. But the next thing we do that all new travelers really should do is mainly there to stop you from losing stuff. <laughs> so, you know, we have, so we have two kids and we're forever losing things. And it's mainly because we didn't implement this strategy before we started last year yeah. that we now implement now and it's been a game changer. And that is trying to find containers and bags for everything. Yeah. So obviously your clothes can go in a packed compression bag, yeah. but there's other stuff you have floating around your bag that never came with a bag, you know, like a belt, for instance, or yep. like playing cards. They come in a cardboard case. So we have gone and purchased as many different types of packing cubes, zip bags, zip bags, mesh bags, like all different things to contain all of our items. So we have a bag that's like a sports bag. 
and it's got goggles and sunscreen and towels and all those kinds of bits and that's got its, that's its own category and its own bag. Then the kids take boxing gloves with us because they do Muay Thai or karate or whatever class we can find them while we're away. So their gloves get like a mesh bag because I don't want to put them in some kind of plasticky bag because they get stinky and things like that. So you've really just got to think about what can possibly go in a bag what could go with that to combine it into one bag, make a bag that's a category, whether it's the beach, whether it's sport, whether it's gym equipment, camera gear, whatever it is, that bag needs a category and then it needs to be a nice square or rectangular shape to fit notes nicely in your Tetris of your bag. And it's not only from a make sure you don't lose things perspective, mm. it's also from an organisation perspective. When you are living out of a suitcase like we are, it's sometimes you have to move quickly. Yep. Sometimes you don't have time to pack up as neatly as you can. Yep. At least if everything has a bag, you can like skim the bag over and see if anything's missing. So mm -hmm. you can look and go, okay, well, there's something that's supposed to be there in a bag and, yep. uh, and it's not there, which triggers us to go and have a look for it if mm. we do lose it. And in a pinch, we can just throw everything in there. And as long as it stayed in that bag, it's we're generally going to get it into the suitcase and get it to the next place, even yep. if it's not in the right spot. Yep. Because that's always the biggest thing. It's always the pack of cards that goes missing or it's yep. always a set of goals that goes missing. Yep. Whereas now, if the, we go down to a swimming pool, we just take the whole swimming bag with us mm. and then we just put it back in the suitcase when we're done. Yeah. Makes it a lot harder to lose things. Exactly. And this is another quick tip for new travelers. I mean, this is especially if you're going to be traveling for a longer period of time. Maybe you're living out of a suitcase for a bit or a digital nomad, something like that. Or just going on a four week or five week vacation. Make sure to take a photo of how you packed your bag. So when you go to repack it, when you come back, you can get everything back into it. Yeah. And this is super important if you've done like we have and you've had to Tetris and Ninja stuff in a place. If you don't remember how the bag went together, you can actually get run into a bit of issue trying to zip the bloody thing back up. So that's a quick one, but yeah, just try and make sure you get like a little bit of a mud map of where everything is in your bag. So you can make sure that everything goes back into it and you can actually close it so you can get home. All right, so this is my last tip and it's quite a weird or interesting one, but you need to use your suitcase to your advantage. So most suitcases have a flat side and then they'll have a side where the handle for the wheels goes. So you've got a bit of a bump on one side. You really wanna use that to your advantage. So if your suitcase is full of just flat packing cubes that can go anywhere, you're wanting to put the ones that are more rigid on the flat side and the ones that are softer like clothes on the one that has the bump because you can squish them down to go over those bumps and you can get more stuff in. And to qualify, the bumpy side is where the handle generally is in the bag. Yeah. So it's the bumps are caused by the handles. By the handles, yeah, because that's the rod that comes in now. But then if you have a suitcase that has maybe some odds and ends like bags that aren't quite the right shape or they've, they've got some hard things in them, you know, you can actually pack them in the side that has the ridges because you might be able to slot them down the middle. Like in ours, for example, we've got a travel chest set that fits down the middle of the handles and then we've got things that fit down the side and then I can lay packing cubes that are nice and flat on the top of it. So you really need to think about how you can use your suitcase to your advantage because you don't want any air pockets left because you're missing out on packing into that space. So really think about where I can lay these items in my suitcase that's gonna give me a nice flat packable area. And that's it. That's, <laughs> you know, it sounds simple, but the amount of travelers we've met since traveling for the last year that are in amazement at how much we can actually pack and take for a family by just doing those simple things that yeah. A lot of people forget about to be completely honest yeah. it's like the simple things that make all the difference so you know making sure that everything has a place stacking everything on top of each other and making sure how much knowing how much your bag weighs and make sure everything has a bag they sound simple but when you're packing your bag and getting ready for a trip they're the things you don't think about so if you want to get as much as you can into your bags, we would highly recommend that you follow this advice uh, because it's worked really well for us yeah. in the last year. You'll no longer be digging to the bottom of it to find that shirt that you needed that you rolled or you, you folded or whatever down the bottom of your suitcase because you know that you can go and just get the packing cube out, have a look through the packing cube, take it out nicely and put it back in. <laughs> yeah. Or you do it like me and you, t and you do that at the very end because you've taken everything out of the packing <laughs> cube. But... Guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe if you want more travel tips. And if there's something you're curious about that you want us to talk about, leave it in the comments and we'll make a video about it. 
So I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pauline. And we'll catch you all on the horizon.